Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Over 80% of UVM students report that they're involved in at least one club or organization. Consider that there are just over 11,000 students at the school and 200 plus clubs. And you start to get a picture of how vital these clubs are to student life and success. Across the fences, Keith Silva caught up with one of these clubs. And when I say caught up, I, I really mean it. <laughs> so, um, Keith, tell us about UVM Arrow. It's great to have you here, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, Arrow stands for the Alternative Energy Racing Organization. It's a team of about 15 students. Most of them are engineers, and they build a race car. The organization or the club is student run and as they like to say, student driven. Okay, so are there faculty or ad advisors that, that are a part of that? It's just Not them? really, it's them. They are accountable to themselves. No faculty advisors or clubs, uh, no adults checking in to make sure all the paperwork got done or whatever. <laughs> um, the students are accountable for their successes and failures of the project. And as I found out, that means not every idea that gets mentioned to a reporter in an interview shows up in the final design. The UVM Aero Club is test driving a car they've designed and built themselves. Um, also, yeah, don't let off the accelerator. Let's try not to cut Don't yeah. let off it. Thomas Field is the club president. Aero is the alternative energy racing organization. Um, we design and build a electric race car entirely student driven, entirely student built, Field and his teammates have been tightening bolts and soldering switches on this car for months. This test drive is part celebration and part proof of performance that the countless hours spent getting to this point in the process were, indeed, worthwhile. In the weeks leading up to the test drive, Brody Lusberg has been managing his expectations. I'm a big car guy. I really, uh, that's where my passion is, that I'd love for this thing to drive. <laughs> and um, I mean, being a third year, I still haven't seen the car drive since, you know, the COVID years and that not really panning out as we hoped. It'll be very, very exciting for, you know, years of waiting to be able to see it drive. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. We were talking about the, because I was asking. Before okay. joining the Aero team, Alyssa Sestone wasn't really interested in cars but she's always had a passion for math and science. When I was looking at school senior year, I had zero clue what I wanted to do, but I knew that I really liked in school math and science particularly, and going into engineering, you obviously know that it's a male-dominated field. You know what you're getting yourself into. You know that it's math, you know that it's science, and you just kind of dive straight in. Every single person I met is so sweet, so nice, and just want, everyone's an engineer. UVM students have been designing and building race cars for decades. Across the Fence first reported on this race team over 20 years ago. It's not exactly a vehicle you take for a Sunday drive. This is the UVM Mini Baja Amphibious Vehicle, and it's getting uh, road tested in preparation for competition against other top engineering schools. 53 teams all received the same engine, which is a 10 horsepower, and that's constrained. And other than that, we had some uh, measurements that we had to keep the car within, but just to gain as much mechanical advantage as you can out of your design to compete. Problem solving is definitely the key here, is uh, you're, you have a problem and you have to come out with the end result and getting there and the steps you take. The engineering mind helps you uh, helps you get there, helps you step through on the logical process to uh, find the answer. And that's something that you can't really learn in a classroom, but you learn in your college career in engineering. The engine whirs more than purrs now, powered by 302.2 volts of electricity, to be precise. The gas engine may have been switched over to electric, but the competition and the competitive spirit remains the same. It's mainly a design competition, so a big chunk of it is presenting what we designed, presenting why we did certain things with the car. There are driving events and static events, so some of them are endurance. There are acceleration ones, braking ones. There is a rule book, like this thick, full of the rules that we need to abide by. It's like abiding by the rules, but finding the ways to kind of get the best out of them. The, the driving portion is not as big as people would like to think it is. I kind of wish it was more. Um, <laughs> but you can't have a fast car without it doing like without it 
you know, being built well. Also safety, it's gotta be safe. The Aero Club is financed by UVM's Student Government Association. Continuity is key in this club. As the car is passed from one class to the next, it's often redesigned and if need be, improved. For example, the car that went to last year's competition couldn't even get off the ground. The suspension didn't perform as it should have last year. Um, the car was kind of sitting on the ground. <laughs> so we needed to obviously change that. They completely redesigned the suspension and used programming to optimize the handling, um, the ride height. So it's a lot of little things like that. Another change from last year's model is the steering wheel and the cockpit. Updates that improve the form and function of the race car. We're going to have a little interface on the wheel with some start buttons. We do already have a dashboard for the car that has all the buttons on it, but one of the issues with the last frame was our knees were hitting the dashboard, so we were trying to figure out how to get rid of it. And putting everything on the wheel seemed to be the best option, and they're more accessible to the hands while driving. One thing that we didn't realize until we got a prototype was we didn't really think about the grips and how the wheel would handle in our hands and so now we have to go back and kind of redesign so that way it doesn't feel so awkward but it's not something you necessarily think about when you just see it on the screen and you're just looking you're like oh that looks like a wheel it's functional but is it comfortable you may have noticed the changes the team intended to make to the steering wheel weren't implemented in the final design a good reminder that the design process is subject to change and the constraints of time. The steering wheel underlies the hands-on learning opportunities of a student-run organization. So what I really like about it is it gives us a lot of chance to actually do design work. So this is one of the first places where you're able to get the hands-on engineering experience. A lot of classes do have some project-based aspects to it, but they aren't really too expansive, whereas with this we're able to build an entire car. It's looking all right. I enjoy a lot of the hands-on stuff. I like seeing things work. Because <laughs> so often, I mean, obviously you need to see yourself fail and see things fail to then, you know, improve upon them and get to where you need to go. But once you get there, it feels really good. It's a good sense of um, pride in what you've made or uh, the hard work you put in. And that goes for anything, really. That goes for stuff here, goes for school work, goes for anything else that we do. It's very important to me to get more hands-on experience and kind of broaden my education as much as I can because other than shop, there's not really a hands-on experience in this sort of aspect. We have like our materials labs and our fluids labs, which are really cool, but it's not necessarily what I'll be doing once I leave college. And this is more like one of the jobs you can have is working in a shop. This is unique. My friends who go to UNH who are also engineers, I do brag to them about Aero. And I say, guys, I'm in this really cool club and we build a battery operated car and we race it at a competition. And they're like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Tell me more. Designing and building this car has allowed the team members to develop life skills that aren't always taught in the classroom. I think the biggest thing that we've all learned since being in college and being in this basically huge group project together is just communication. It's like knowing who's available when and how much effort they're willing to put in and the time that they can give to you is a really huge part that I think we all kind of struggled with in the beginning but now we know that it's just a crucial part to just communicate. It's important to contribute to a team and it's nice to have people who have your back. So it's nice to kind of have each other's backs and be able to help each other out. And that's, that's going to be true in all of our careers later on, um, working on a team. As much as this car represents problem solving, hard work, and determination, it's also a vehicle these students will use in their future careers. I've learned over the past three years that there's kind of infinite applications for the degree that we're working towards. Um, places I never even knew I could find a job or like a, at least look for a job, um, have come up. Um, pretty much everything in the world needs engineers. Um, everything's designed by an engineer. Um, so even the most obscure things you can kind of find work in and you can find interest in those things too that you didn't know you had the opportunity to. Because a lot of the jobs that we're going to be applying for going into the field or if we want a higher level job, 
starting out with some of that experience sets us apart and gets us a little bit further ahead. So also when jobs are asking for X number of years experience, we can kind of count it as experience because it is engineering. One of the main things they asked me in my interview for an internship this summer, they just were asking about Arrow and the hands-on experience and different things that I've done through Arrow to you know, better prepare myself for the workforce. And I went through everything that I was doing and what my role is as a cockpit lead. And they were just very interested in it because it is something cool and kind of unique to being in this club at UVM. Being a member of UVM's Aero team guarantees you're going places. The checkered flag has gone up and the results are in. The UVM Aero team placed 10 out of 21 teams in the 17th annual Formula Hybrid and Electric event that was held at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway in early May. Hey, nice story, Keith. Really, really nice. Congratulations to the Aero team also. Yes, yes. And, and tell, tell us a little bit about the, the competitors. Who are they competing against? Where are they from? So it's an international competition. Um, there's a few teams from Canada. A team came as from far away as Wyoming. And then there are the usual suspects from those top engineering schools, MIT, Carnegie Mellon, Princeton. Okay, so placing 10th out of 21st is uh, pretty legit. That's, that's great. Were they pleased? They were very pleased. Given the setbacks that they've had, as you heard in the story, um, they hadn't really seen the car ever run. So that was a big thing. <laughs> and last year's car not getting off the ground. Uh, UVM was also presented with a Learn and Compete Award, mm. which is given to the team that's shown the most improvement over the pr previous year and chose promise for the future. Awesome, and you know, I noticed that there were a couple of women taking part this year. There's a woman um, in the 2002, she was actually the driver, very cool. It's great <laughs> to see women in engineering. Yes, and I should also point out, I would be remiss uh, if I didn't say thank you uh, to my daughter who helped out a little bit with this story. So um, she, she gets in by proxy as a woman in engineering. <laughs> awesome, well thank you Keith for that story and all the great stories that you bring to us. Thank you, thank you Fran. And thank you for joining us on Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.